Welcome to ForexTV.com. Today's Wednesday, April 1st. I'm Tim Kelly with your New York Forex market buzz. Dollar is losing ground to the yen and British pound and slightly higher against the euro midway through the U.S. session. U.S. equity markets shook off losses in the overnight futures activity and oil continues to slide on weaker demand and growing supply while gold is little changed today. Let's take a look at uh, the stories making headlines for today. ADP report shows 742,000 U.S. job losses in March. U.S. ISM manufacturing index unexpectedly rises for the third straight month. And U.S. pending home sales are better than expected. The U.S. loses a record number of jobs, 742,000 private jobs in March. The survey of private employment in the U.S. showed a record. Uh, jobs were lost in March, the worst result in the series history. Economists had been expecting 663,000 jobs lost in the uh, automatic data or ADP uh, processing, uh, automatic data processing or ADP report. The previous month's print was revised to six, uh, 706,000 from a previous reading of a negative 697,000. The private employment survey comes ahead of Friday's official non-farm payrolls report economists expect to show a loss of 658,000 jobs lost. U.S. ISM Manufacturing Index unexpectedly rises for the third straight month. The ISM Manufacturing Survey unexpectedly rose to 36.3 in March. The market consensus was for a climb of 36. New orders climbed to 41.2 from 33.1, while production rose marginally to 36.4, that from a previous print of 36.3 reading. U.S. pending home sales rise 2.1 percent. The National Association of Realtors reported Wednesday that U.S. home sales rose 2.1 percent in February after falling 7.7 percent in January. Economists were expecting a flat reading in the month. Pending sales in the Northeast rose 6.1 percent but are still down 17.3 percent compared to a year ago, while the Midwest saw a 10.5 percent rise still down 1.9 percent from February of 08. Sales in the south rose 3.6 percent down 4.2 percent uh, from a year ago while sales in the west fell 14 percent down 6.3 percent from a year earlier. Meanwhile the National Association of Realtors affordability index rose 0.9 percentage points to a record high of 173.5 in February. U.S. oil inventories relatively in line. Gasoline unexpectedly rises. The U.S. Energy Information Administration reported that crude oil inventories increased uh, to uh, 2844 uh, compared to the, uh, the 3 million consensus. Gasoline supri supplies increased uh, 2,225,000 compared to the minus 1.5 million consensus estimate. The data was for the reference week, March 27th. Distillate supply figures added to bearish enthusiasm for the energy complex. The EIA said supplies increased by 221,000 compared to expectations of a 1.150,000 1, uh, 1, drawdown. Refinery, refinery utilization was down uh, 0.28 percentage points following a 0.13 percentage point increase last week. Analysts were expecting a 0.25% uh, uh, percentage point increase in utilization. Refineries are operating at 81.7 percent of capacity according to the EIA, while crude imports rose by 0.17 million barrels per day to 9.6 million barrels per day. In the construction arena, U.S. construction spending continued to fall in February. Construction spending in the U.S. continued a, a decline by falling falling by 0.9 percent month over month, that according to the U.S. Department of Commerce. The consensus forecast uh, had a 1.9 percent decline factored in. Total construction figure for January was revised downward to negative 3.5 percent from negative 3.3 percent. Residential construction fell by 4.1 percent, a further drop from January's 3.5 percent decline, while non-residential construction rose 0.5 percent after a 3.6 percent decline in the prior month. MBA mortgage applications increase again in the week ending March 27th, 
Weekly mortgage applications in the U.S. advanced for the fourth week in a row in the reference week, March 27th. That according to data from the Mortgage Bankers Association, or the MBA. The MBA reported a 3% week-over-week increase in applications. In the previous week, applications were up 32.2%. portion of fixed-rate mortgages rose 2.9% after rising 33% previously. Meanwhile, those opting for variable uh, rates advanced 11.3% after the prior week's 7.7% decrease. Today we're joined by Elmer Eisenhower, a Senior Market Analyst at Roche International. Roche International, excuse me, Elmer. How are you doing today? Welcome to the program. I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Well, we got a lot of data out today, Elmer, and uh, a little bit confusing. Uh, you and I had talked before we came on air here that uh, a little bit surprising on the equity markets. Why don't, why don't we begin there? Uh, overnight, we, we saw the uh, futures fall off considerably after uh, last night. The Obama administration announced that uh, perhaps the best plan or, or course of action uh, for the automotive industry would be bankruptcy. Uh, what do you make of today's uh, activity? Well, we did see futures bounce after the administration retracted that statement or rather corrected it, saying it, uh, it was not true. Uh, so I think we got a little bit of a bounce on uh, on futures as a result of that. Uh, and aside from the uh, ADP employment data this morning, uh, the bulk of the figures were basically on the better side of expectations. Uh, the pending home sales and ISM figures in particular uh, were upside surprises, as were the uh, construction spending figures. So I think that's consistent with the latest string of economic figures out of the U.S., which you know by no means are are, are encouraging, but are certainly showing at least a slowdown in the pace of declines. Uh, if that's the case, then we could be in a bottoming process for the economy, uh, and that, I think, would be, uh, of course, a positive thing for equities. So uh, I think, you know, the market may be reaching a little bit in terms of, in, of looking at these figures uh, in such a positive light, but uh, I think that is one uh, aspect that's pushing equities and risk appetite a little bit higher. Uh, Omar, you mentioned some bright signs in the economic data. Um, it, you know, the retail sales and spending have have kind of uh, you know paired their their uh, declines, and uh, we got some some good news today, as you just mentioned. Um, but um, uh, employment continues to sink, and that that really um, has historically been the bellwether, and uh, we expect to see a, a pretty dismal figure uh, again this week in non-farm payrolls. Um, it, is it is it your sense that that uh, folks are seeing this as the bottom here and trying to pick the bottom? Well, I think the market and and investors are are, are being a little <laughs> bit optimistic here. Um, keep in mind, employment tends to be a lagging indicator, so uh, we'd likely see other sectors of the economy bottom uh, probably five to six months before we see any kind of stabilization in uh, employment. So uh, I think we're still expecting and pricing in dismal jobs numbers. Um, that was reflected in today's ADP report and will probably be uh, reflected in Friday's broader government jobs number. Uh, but I think the market is focusing a little bit more on the uh, the bright side of the story and, as you mentioned, uh, uh, basically upside surprises to retail sales. Uh, housing in particular, uh, not only today's pending home sales number, but uh, last week's new and existing home sales number uh, showed signs that we might be near a bottom, again, at least that's what the market's focusing on, and I think that's what's driving risk appetite a little bit higher right now. Well, I think I, I have to agree with you. The uh, the the um, the overall sentiment uh, in in the markets has um, <coughs> excuse me shifted from uh, a, a a dire um, emergency or <coughs> excuse me <coughs> the uh, crisis situation to one of perhaps a bit of stabilization or, or perhaps a, a quiet period. So, uh, you know, factoring the fact that the 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 uh, the releases that we've seen uh, this week, economic data this week and last week, um, were not exactly good, but they were less bad than they have been, um, and perhaps signaling that the worst is is behind us. Ahead of us this week, we do have uh, the ECB meeting, uh, an announcement there. It's it's widely expected that there'll be a 50 basis point cut. I would like to get your uh, thoughts on that, and also uh, we've got some event risk hanging over our heads with the G20. Although there's, there's not a lot of, of takeaway uh, from the G20, uh, certainly there, there's no consensus on what is, what is really to be expected to, to come away from uh, the G20. And it seems like some of the themes are perhaps some IMF reform and perhaps a consensus on financial market regulation. 
What's your take on, on, on the, the trading activity going forward from today at this point? We seem to be range-bound. You think that's going to continue? Yeah, uh, you know, starting with the ECB, I think the event risk ahead of both the ECB and the G20 is adding to the uh, kind of range-bound trading that we've seen a little bit here. Uh, but again, with respect to the ECB, I think we're looking at a 50 basis point interest rate cut that was clearly telegraphed in most of the uh, commentary that we've heard from ECB members over the last couple of weeks. Uh, the market will be particularly focused on the post-Governing uh, Council press conference where President Jean-Claude Trichet could potentially signal that uh, unconventional policy measures like quantitative easing uh, will basically be the next step for the ECB. Uh, I think the market is betting on that, and I think that's undermining the euro a little bit. Uh, I'm certainly expecting that he will signal that as interest rates near zero, which, uh, which basically uh, they'll be at 1% in the eurozone if, uh, if they do cut by 50 basis points, uh, then I do expect him to signal that quantitative easing, probably the purchase of corporate bonds, uh, will be the next step for the ECB. I think that will ultimately drive the euro lower, uh, given the fact that the ECB has long resisted such measures, uh, and I think um, that would also basically add the ECB uh, to that list of central banks like the Fed, like the Bank of England, uh, that are right now tempering or, or, or basically uh, using quantitative easing as a method to, to boost growth. Um, with respect to the G20, you're right, I think there's, uh, there's not much to be expected from the G20. Uh, I think we will see some sort of a... Uh, uh, a commitment from uh, member countries to donate more to the IMF. Um, that would essentially help to improve risk appetite marginally, and I think that could undermine the U.S. dollar a little bit. Uh, but above and beyond that, I think it's hard to say that we'll see any kind of consensus, uh, especially because most of these countries are coming into uh, the G20 with such different opinions on the causes of the financial crisis and uh, the best ways to get out of it. So I think, uh, you know, the expectation should be set pretty low for any uh, consensus in the G20. Uh, so, Omar, the, um, speaking about the, the quantitative easing issue at the ECB, uh, there, there, there is no clear consensus on that as far as I can see. You have uh, folks like uh, Papadimos uh, coming out and saying perhaps they will expand the balance sheet, but then you've got Trichet and others saying, well, you know, we, we, we leave our options open, and they have been resistant to do that since it is, it is a rather complex. It's not as straightforward as, as uh, let's say, the U.K. Or, or the U.S. and their quantitative easing activities. They'd have to go buy corporate bonds on the, on the secondary market to, to mm -hmm. try to free up some, uh, some capital and, and credit lines. Um, it, so, so it looks like that is the, the main focus, uh, unless we get a, a huge surprise either way on non-farm payrolls. That, that probably is the most important event uh, left this week. Do, do you think if they come out in, in the press conference after the, uh, the meeting, and say that they will begin a quantitative easing campaign. Is that going to be a real surprise to the market, or do you think the surprise would be if they didn't do that? Uh, I think the surprise would be if they did not uh, signal that quantitative easing is, is basically in the pipeline. Um, I think they'll probably, the most likely scenario is that they will signal uh, you know, a, a commitment to, to, that, uh, to that end. I don't think they'll signal that uh, quantitative easing is imminent. I think the, you know, historically the ECB has kind of laid the groundwork with, um, with uh, basically the language in their statements. Uh, and so that would be the first step. Uh, but I think that the downside risk, to the, the, the downside risk is still for the euro. Uh, in light of that, I think the euro would basically suffer as a result of uh, kind of the about face that the ECB has been forced to do. Uh, you know, they were late in the game cutting interest rates, uh, they were forced to uh, respond over the last couple months with slashing their, uh, their, their benchmark lending rates, and the euro suffered. And I think we'll see a similar outcome when uh, the ECB is finally forced to, uh, uh, to uh, use unconventional measures to, to shore up their economy. So, you know, whether that's this month or next month, I think, you know, we can never really be certain, but I think it's imminent, I think it's inevitable, rather, uh, and I think that will ultimately keep the euro's upside limited. Well, uh, speaking about euro, just getting specific on currencies now, uh, euro seems to be trading a, a bit heavy uh, to start this week uh, in a range, but um, certainly uh, a little bit heavier, um, not, not much uh, a bid there to take it over uh, its, its range. Uh, it, if they come out and announce a quantitative easing program, wh where do you think we go here? And, uh, you know, do we see a precipitous drop here over, over the next couple of days into the, to the 120s again? Uh, what's your, your take on um, 
you know, on the, on the range of uh, trading that uh, do we break out of our current ranges uh, by, you know, by a, a margin, by a, a small margin, or what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I think we could break out of the current ranges. If we look back to uh, the euro's most recent run-up, I think a lot of it had to do with when the Fed announced its own quantitative easing program. So uh, we then saw the dollar break out of a uh, uh, kind of range in the mid one, mid to upper 120s to around the, uh, the mid-130s. And I think if the euro basically, uh, or if the ECB, excuse me, uh, commits to quantitative easing, then I could see a lot of that premium that was placed into the euro basically evaporate. So I think we could be looking at the uh, mid to upper 120s again uh, over the next month to two months. Now, does that take the risk trades down with it as well? Uh, I think eventually that will uh, take the risk trades down with it as well, yes. Okay. And um, let's uh, maybe we'll finish up with uh, uh, the, um, the uh, uh, yen pair. Uh, wh what's your take there? It seems, uh, again, uh, you know, every time we get into the, uh, the 99 region, we seem to pull back uh, 100 basis points or so uh, ahead of that 100 mark. You think that's going to be eclipsed after this event risk has passed? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, given the, uh, the, really the scope of the data out of Japan and, and how dismal it's been, uh, I think fundamentals are starting to have a little bit more of an impact on, on the yen. Uh, I think going forward, uh, the market will only be able to ignore uh, the deteriorating Japanese economy for so long, and, and I see no reason why we're not going to be above that 100 mark in dollar yen uh, probably within the next couple of weeks. Okay, uh, Omar, thank you so much. I think we're going to leave it there for today. I really appreciate you being with us again. Thanks for having me. This has been your New York Forex Market Buzz with Omar Essener of Roosh International. I'm Tim Kelly. Join us later this afternoon for PM Exchange right here on ForexTV.com.